in the church of St. Harold today in Breeden on the Hill, Leicestershire. And I'm here because of two reasons. Firstly, a friend of mine recommended it which are amongst the finest Saxon arts in the world. And also because of its connections with, saying that it's named after St. Harald, and by association, St. Modwin uh, of Burton on Trent. Now, Modwin's most famous miracle was uh, when she was on Andresy and a hermit who is unnamed often came to visit her. And he would bring a book with him on the lives of the saints and together they would read it uh, for their religious edification. And this hermit is said to have come from Breedon. Uh, what happened one day is that he forgot to bring the book. So they sent two virgins in Modern's community up the river to go and get it. And there was a storm or at least some wind. The boat capsized and sank to the bottom with the boat over the top of them. In prayer, both Modwin and the Hermit sensed this, prayed to God, and the waters of the river parted like Moses uh, at the Red Sea. They walked down the dry riverbed and found the upturned boat. The Hermit tried to right it. He couldn't. Modwin, with the power of God, could, and the two virgins emerged unscathed. However seriously you take such a legend, it is interesting um, because it talks of this hermit of Breedon. And over the years, that hermit has been identified as being St. Hardolf or Erdewolf. To be fair, it's probably unlikely. Here in Breedon, which is the site of a very ancient monastery, um, there are four saints on it. Uh, Fridicus, who is the founder, we think, of the monastery, and he gave the, the land uh, for the king to found the monastery on. And Erdwolf, who is described as Erdwolf Rex, which suggests he was a king, and he, he, there is a king that you've identified him as being, um, but kings are generally not hermits, so he probably wasn't the hermit. But there's also two other saints, uh, Biona, or Bena, and Cotta. And what is also interesting is a few miles over in that direction, there is the Anchor Church, which is a series of caves by the River Trent. And it is there that we think this hermit, uh, the one that visited Modwin, actually lived and would walk down the river or sail down the river or up the river to go and see her. So possibly that hermit, although living in the Anchor Caves, was... Um, a member of this religious house here. Um, it's not un inconceivable that Modwin uh, wasn't originally um, because it is thought this was a mixed house of men and women. And so there is a connection and that's why they might say he was from Breedon even if he was actually in the cave a few miles away. Coming here really is a privilege because it is one of those very few places where there is a tangible link um, with that Saxon era, which is, I think, quite accurately called the Dark Ages because we have so few links with it. These are probably amongst the best carvings. Uh, we don't know who the three figures are, or they, there may be six or more, um, but they seem to be in sets of three. And could it be that one of these actually depicts uh, our hermit saint? Whatever the case, it's an amazing place to visit and an amazing place to start a pilgrimage of St. Modwin and also the other saints of this area, I, I'd like to say of, of Staffordshire but it's not in Staffordshire or Derbyshire but it's not in Derbyshire in Leicestershire and here's where three counties meet also although it's um, a very small area it, it doesn't really have a name which is a shame. But the three saints, or four saints, if we include Frithicus, of this area and Modwin, and it makes a beautiful journey to start here. And then our next stop, of course, would be the Anchor Caves. So uh, let's go.
And so here I am in the Anchor Church near Ingleby. It's quite remarkable to think that I'm actually sat in the same cave uh, where the hermit who uh, visited Modwin um, used to live. Okay, the cave's been enlarged over the years and we know very little about him, but this is the only cave around here and the name Anchor Cave suggests that an anchorite did live here. I find this a particularly powerful place. I'm part of that because of the walk to it. It doesn't take a lot of imagination to cast yourself back over a thousand years to that time. Okay, there's cooling towers on the horizon, there are pylons, but the actual river itself with its surging waters, with the grasses and nettles by it, with the geese and the swan flying overhead is the same river and I find water always to be quite powerful and I find that that constant flow to be a real powerful image uh, of the power of God. When I first visited here that's where I got the idea that when I was going to write a life of St. Modwin, which I tried before and failed, to be fair, I would, rather than tell it in, in the standard fashion, I would actually have that unnamed hermit um, as the narrator. And that's because I felt a connection with him. I felt a connection as I was walking along uh, by the river. And so I set the story whereby he he is walking from here to um, Andrasi, to Modwin's Island, um, not to see her because it's after she's died, but to visit uh, the nuns in her community. And, and an unknown traveler takes refuge in this cave from the store. And he just tells him the story of St. Modwin. And in the end, of course, that story has a profound effect on the traveler himself. And I like that imagery because the traveller is, is a Viking, he's a Norseman, and he's pagan. And I think for us today, there is a very old and very beautiful Christian tradition in this country, um, but it's largely forgotten. 
And actually, most people couldn't relate more to the uh, to the Viking, who really isn't that interested in God. But you know what? In times of need, he'll pray to all the old gods, and he'll try the new one as well. He might as well see what works. We do live in a largely non-religious society. That's not always a bad thing. Um, the abuse of power sadly always comes with religion, but I think one of the sad things is we've lost that kind of spiritual connection with the land that I feel very closely in places like this. Um, historically, there's not a lot to look at. It's a cave, a pretty vandalised one. But it does give us that rare connection with uh, a time long past and I feel honoured to have been there. And the next stop uh, is somewhere with another connection from thousands of years ago, um, Repton. Thanks. Local people have given it some pretty unusual decorations, I think. At a time, maybe maybe still happening, that maybe illegal raves or parties were taking place in here. I'm not sure if it's desecration or a continuation of some sort of counterculture that began with those who rejected the world all those years ago. Hear my voice when I call, O Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject or forsake me. O God, my saviour, though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me in a straight path. Amen. Lord, I have heard your voice calling at a distance. Guide my steps to you, Lord. Guide my steps to you. Lord, I have heard your voice calling at a distance. Guard my way to you, Lord. Guard my way to you. Lord, I have heard your voice calling at a distance. Keep my heart for you, Lord. Keep my heart for you. Lord, I have heard your voice. Softly as the dewfall of heaven, may the Holy Spirit come upon me to aid me and to raise me, to bind my prayer firmly at the throne of the God of life. God's will would I do, my own will bridle. God's due would I give, my own due yield. God's path would I travel, my own path refuse. All whom I love, into your safekeeping, all that I am, into your tender care, all that will be into your perfect will. My eyes, my eyes have seen the King. The vision of his beauty has pierced me deep within. To whom else can I go? My heart, my heart desires him. He's touched something inside of me that's now reaching out for him. I know I must go. My God is my love. My God, my healing one, my bright love is my merciful Lord. My sweet love is Christ. His heart is my desire. All my love are you, O King of glory. Amen. In the true faith may we remain. In Jesus may we find hope. Against exploitation of the poor may we help. Against our faults may we fight. Our bad habits abandon. The name of our neighbour may we defend. In the work of mercy may we advance. Those in misery may we help. Every danger of sin may we avoid. In holy charity may we grow strong. In the well of grace in confession may we wash. May we deserve the help of the saints, the friendship of our brother Erdwolf Wynne. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
St. Winston's Church, Repton. I'm in the church now, and these are actually replicas of pieces found in the Staffordshire Hoard. But it's not the hoard that I've come to look at today, but something far more exciting. And to get to it, we have to go down these steps. And through this rather intriguing little door. This is the crypt of St. Winston's Church. Unfortunately, the lighting means that we can't actually see a lot down here. Um, but this is the royal crypt of Mercia, and this is where St. Winston was buried. And it is all that is left of the Saxon um, establishment, started by St. Warburg where St. Guthlach studied. Uh, he died in Croyland in 714. And it's amazing because this virtually perfectly preserved little space um, survived uh, because it was hidden. And then in the 19th century, they, uh, they found it again by accident. It was remarkable. Anyway, let's continue on our journey discover St. Modwin. I'm now at Stapen Hill, over the River Trent from Burton, and there's the church inspired by the uh, spires of Oxford. But I've come here because this church is built on the spot where Modwin once stood, and she stood there on her, uh, when she returned from her pilgrimage from Rome, and looked across over the River Trent to this island here. Didn't have a name then, and she knew that this island was where she'd been called to by God. And it was on this island that she built a church dedicated to St. Andrew. And so the island became known as Andrusay. And that church tower over there is the Church of St. Modwin. A church dedicated after her, uh, built on the site of the Abbey Church, of the Abbey that succeeded um, her hermitage and was where her relics were kept. It'll probably be dark by the time we get there, but nonetheless to be in such a place is an honour. Thank you. 
it truly is night time now and there above the trees is the Bond church built on the site of the old abbey church that Modwin in his legacy founded but now we're actually crossing over the bridge onto the holy island itself the island of Andrasy where Modwin set up her hermitage all those years ago back then this was all forest and dark so it's perhaps fitting we can't see a lot now because the fact is there's not a lot to see these days this is more about what was than what is nonetheless I do think this place has a special presence and her legacy is certainly a great one because I wonder if this town would be here at all if she hadn't been and now we're on Andrisi itself perhaps very near to the spot perhaps on the spot where Modwin once prayed and for that we should give thanks to both her and to God and I thank you for coming on this pilgrimage with me in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit Amen